In this lesson, we're going to play with botanicals. And it's probably um, one of the most popular things to do on the gel plate. It's very soft and receptive to the textures in leaves and plants. It is very important not to choose anything that's too sharp so that it doesn't damage your gel plate. But I'm going to do the first print with this new growth off a lavender bush and it's smelling absolutely beautiful. And I'm just going to um, show you um, a ghost print. So often in gel printing, you get the opportunity to pull a second print and sometimes even a third print. So our first print um, is just our first print, our primary print, and then you can lay down more paper and without adding more paint and get a ghost print. So I will show you that. And then the second botanical print we will do is layering uh, those prints together. So I'll just pop my lavender there. I'm going to use, so you might hear a lot of talk about golden open paints and they're not as cheap as, well, I'm not assuming that the normal other tubes are cheap because they're not there. It's quite an expensive brand. You can get much cheaper, but this particular range are slow drying acrylics. And they work beautifully with botanicals and wanting to take a little bit more time to print multiple layers and play with the, um, the paint a bit more. So I find them particularly fabulous with botanicals. And so that's what I'll show you. But you certainly don't have to use open paints for that. So I'm going to do a little blend. Hopefully it'll work. I'm going to do a bit of sap green and you don't be too wasteful with this paint <laughs> um, and I'm just going to just put ever so slightly a small amount of Payne's Grey in there um, to give it more of a, a lavender look to it. Hopefully I'll get the right colour, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to now spread that out. Probably didn't make a great deal of difference to the colour, but there you go. Just mix that out on the plate. So this really is a slow drying um, paint. So that's got its advantages. There are times when you don't want that. So you just, and I'm just getting rid of some and really getting those brayer lines out. It's a little bit patchy, but I don't mind that. I'm happy with that for this print. But I do want to get rid of my brayer lines as much as possible. And that's just working that. And because it's the golden open paint, you do get a little bit more time to um, let that work that. So I am going to just lay down these and pop that one there. Yeah, an interesting one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six. Be nice to do an odd number. And I'm going to use tissue, this art tissue, because I find it helpful to be able to lay it down and really massage in around those stalks and leaves. So, and the paint doesn't dry too quickly because we're using the open paint. So I'm hoping we'll get a nice amount of texture. And by using the tissue, I can see where I haven't yet picked up the paint. So a nice little massage in between all those 
leaves pressing down and you can that's where the tissue is great this does become one of the prints that's going onto tissue and then we're going to you can see just by pushing and again important not to have anything too spiky and hoping all those little details will come through on the plate. Some of them are a little bit bunchy. But we don't want to move them. So it's important to leave them in one spot. There might be just a little bit too much um, clusters of leaves in there, not showing the detail. There we go. I'll take that off and this will be print number one. It's usually not a, a very interesting print, but I'll get a second piece of tissue and take my little lavenders off. Very gently, we don't want to um, change or uh, press into that. So with the tissue I catch that front edge and then gradually just lay it down trying to get rid of any creases and air bubbles. It's quite a subtle pattern. Okay I've dried it off with the hairdryer so let's just see how this print comes off the plate. Okay, I'll just put it on some cream. Very subtle, but that goes to show just if you have a look in there, there's some really nice detail in that section. And it does keep a little bit, even though I massaged all around it, it did keep some of the green on the plate. So that's just a quick version of just the ghost print uh, which is preferred to the first print so that's the initial print where you're picking up the vast majority of the paint um, hoping to leave all the detail in behind the leaves and the stalks which we have done quite subtle but it is quite pretty so I'm going to go on to another print now and I'm going to use some nice big roses leaves of these these they're not um, thorns they're just nice and soft so these have lovely prominent veins and they're nice and flat so this will produce a much better print I'm hoping and I'm going to use the golden open paints again and I'm going to be doing layering the print so uh, remembering that what goes on first is um, will be uppermost in our print so I'm going to use the lighter color to print onto I'm going to just grab my roller so I'm going to put the lighter green down first And just before I do do that, because I'm going to print them in layers and I have it on the same backing paper that I plan to do the prints onto. So I'm going to get a couple of sheets of this cardboard and the reason I have set it where it is, is that when I align my prints, I'm going to align them with that cardboard so let me just grab a couple of sheets I have this I'll just show you what I'm using back here 
Um, I don't know whether this is a, um, available worldwide, but this is my go-to for printing, um, or gen even I cut it down for the 5x7 plate, but this is definitely a great size pad of paper, a big block. As you can see there, big block of paper, 100 sheets, 240 GSM or 113 pounds, Fabriano Academia uh, drawing and watercolour and it's a really good value block of paper. So I just thought I'd show you that as I'm getting it out. So I've got my sheets of cardboard here and let's get back to doing our green gold on the plate. Rolling it out. Again, this is the open paint, so it will uh, stay wet longer than standard acrylics. And with these layering of these botanicals, it is helpful. Okay. So, vein side down and vary the direction of the leaves and trying to fit them all in together. And that one can just go there. And getting, I'm not going to use that. So I'm actually going to use that side to absorb the paint. Just because I don't, I'm not a fan of this first print. So I don't usually keep this one. So I just do this layer usually with scrap paper. And leftovers. And just giving it a good massage down. You can't quite see as well with the print already on it, but we're just giving it a good massage. Not so worried about the time, which is good because usually if you're using a standard acrylic, you can actually be, um, it can dry very quickly in this process. So let's hope it absorbed a lot of that paper. I mean that paint is still a little bit there. I might just put another layer of tissue down, just a little bit of scrap tissue again to pick up a bit more. The more time you take on that stage the more precise your print will be. And that's picked up quite a good amount. Gently peel those back. And we're going to, I think we could probably get two prints out of that actually. So the first one I'm going to align with my base plate as much as possible. And I think there's a good chance that would print and then leave some on the, let's have a look. So that's probably as much as I want on that print. But as you can see, there's still some there, which it's good to now let dry. And we're going to, um, I'm going to pull that with matte medium. So that's that first print. It's probably a little bit squishy. Could it, the paint could have been a bit thinner on that. Get the hairdryer onto that and let it dry. And then that can be another print that I'll put onto tissue. Another thing that is possible 
is actually to use some of the paint that is on there and so it's just a matter of working out well which do I try and stamp it onto here I'll just show you I'll put it on a loose piece let that dry and let's see what we can get off these so you can get some nice effects just by using your leaves as stamps especially with the open paint because it just stays wet so much longer be careful not to move the leaves once you've got them down left here we've got a leaf here I think one there so nothing's wasted just making the use of that paint there as well and there you go so we're getting multiple prints especially using this open paint there's a good chance that that would have dried Uh, if it was a standard paint so I'm just making the most of what's left there that's pretty well dry now I think that one was still a bit damp so there you go we're getting quite a few interesting prints with our botanicals So here is our ghost ghost print. <laughs> it's our second ghost print from these leaves. And I'm going to apply a bit of matte gel and lift this print. Won't need too much. Just apply that with a palette knife. Wipe that off, make it clean. And this will just create we're going from that wet, that dry paint that we talk about that won't lift. We're reactivating it with a gel, a matte gel medium. And that the moisture will then activate that dry layer. I'm, I'm lining it up as best I can with the paper underneath laying that down and then now we want that to dry we want that matte gel to adhere our paint and our print to our substrate so roller in the bucket and i'm just going to take a moment to dry the back of that with my hair dryer And now we will pull this print. So that um, matte gel really has lifted that really nicely. And the paint, the plate was quite clean really. So there's our ghost ghost print. Our ghost print. And actually, I think I, <laughs> I painted, uh, used the reverse side of that. So that was our first print, as you can see with this green gold. In fact, it's still a bit damp, that. Um, just put that onto tissue because I, although, you know, you can use those. They can create some nice effects going back and front uh, in the same sort of um, coordinating colours. Oh! <laughs> oh, it helps to get your palette out of the way <laughs> oh dear never mind 
just messed up that one. Let me just move the wet. That's why um, just be careful of those open paints. They stay wet for a long time. So there you go. That's a bit disappointing. But I'm actually going to cover that up with some, <laughs> some paint in the next layer. I'm going to do another layer of those same leaves. And this time I'm going to use the sap green hue um, over the top and just layer those prints and hopefully that won't be quite so obvious. Okay, colour number two, sap green hue, again in the open paint range of golden, which is giving us quite a bit of time to play with it and I'm just not used to how long it takes to dry but there you go we'll rectify that little mishap in the previous uh, section so now same process again just rolling out the paint I'm going to use exactly the same leaves And we're going to create a couple of different prints and overlay it on what we've already printed. And hopefully it'll look fabulous. Getting rid of those brayer lines as much as possible. Okay, so hopefully I can make it that it's a bit different layout to the previous one. We don't want the leaves exactly in the same spot. And that one can sneak in there. Okay, vein side down. And I'm going to lay the tissue down and mop up that print. Getting in, just really massaging down. Because I've used a new bit of tissue, you can actually see a bit clearer how much around the stalk you're massaging. Really wanting that to be a nice precise print. And I could. Take a bit more off that. And a little bit more tissue. There's so many decisions to be made here. I could have used that layer to print on top of my previous prints in the green gold, but I've chosen not to. I'll mop up that and leave again it's quite squishy i think that's a bit of the nature of golden paints probably as well and i am going to overprint this one so this will be darker that's lighter i do that one or this one Actually, I'll keep the darker with the darker. <laughs> and I'm registering the cardboard according to my plate underneath. I don't want to necessarily pick up absolutely everything. I'll give that a massage. And we'll pull that off. And... Oh, that little smudge looks like it's part of it. So that's how it's beginning to layer, which is quite nice. Apart from the smudge. <laughs> we won't worry about that. And now I'm going to 
put this ghost ghost print um, again down aligning it with my piece at the bottom so I've put the same strength print on each one so giving this nice good because I didn't want to overpower one with the other but I'll just see how this one comes off the registration's really good on that yeah I'm glad I did that okay so everything's come off there now except a tiny little bit which I'll clean up but that's our ghost ghost print here is our ghost print with its smudge and here were our prints where we were mopping up the paint around but you can use those uh, you can easily print with those and create another layer of pattern in fact let's let's use one of these to stamp our, our leaves onto a bit more random in position to we're not trying to match them up to what was already there Let's see what comes of this that's one it's very you've got to be very careful not to move the leaves they can tend to just want to move a bit and try and get the veins down so using a traditional that's looking nice a paint there's a good chance that it would be dry by now whereas this open paint uh, especially with these botanical prints can as the name suggests stay open for quite a bit of time doesn't matter if leaves overlap if you force that down you're just as likely either to smudge it um, or break it off and one more we haven't got much room for this one that's okay that can go off the page a bit which will look quite nice like the break in that leaf it should come up nicely in that negative space okay there we go that's that's a surprise little one that's pr quite pretty and again you don't have to leave it as a full piece you can be tearing that up and using it in collage so we've collected quite a few prints in this session um, and they've come up quite well I'm now going to take our botanical prints just one step further um, and look it's all experimental I may regret it <laughs> I might be happy with what I've got at that point but now what I'm going to do is I've got two transparent paints down there you can see through this transparent paint into the layer below you've got two transparent paints now I'm going to apply an opaque white which will block out a lot of that 
but in the shape of the leaves will reveal what's underneath. So that's why I'm using an opaque. I'm using titanium white in the Atelier. It's a nice, creamy, um, good, thick white paint that does block out most of what's underneath. You will see some of it, no doubt, but I'm going to give that a go. And, um, and then with the ghost print, I've got a piece of black cardboard, which I hope it, because this isn't an open paint, so I hope it stays wet enough to pull onto my black paper. All right, let's have a go with this one. So a nice, generous amount of titanium white. But we don't want it sort of too wet and gluggy. We don't want the leaves moving around on the plate. So there's a balance to be found between um, getting enough on there to get a good strong print and too wet. Um, I think that will do. Get rid of that grey line down the middle. will do I don't want to work it too hard and again it's just a matter of trying to vary the placement of our leaves putting in the big ones first what have I got here Just pop in that all I've got. I must be more economical in my placement of them. I'll pop that leaf off, put that there, and then put that there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so now I am actually going to put this print down instead of wasting this print this is going to provide a mask hopefully good massage I can't see through this one and the cardboard doesn't have the um, flexibility of the tissue so it's good to just really take your time with this if that white does dry, I can use a medium to lift that off the plate. So I'm going to just really work this as well as I can. And let's see what we, we get. So it didn't quite block it out completely, but it does cut back on the design a bit. I think it's really quite nice. So I won't waste time. I'll peel these off. <laughs> the open paint was still a bit green under there. I did try and mop it up, but this this hopefully will come up a treat on our black cardboard. The detail is beautiful. Woo! So just, there is a risk that it was dry, but it didn't feel dry. So that's why I'm just going in quickly with my black. And I'm going to wash my roller and put a hairdryer on that. Okay. Let 
Let's see how our print onto black came out. Look at that beautiful detail. So there we go. I'm sure these would be a bit wet and could print again. I'm not going to put them down. Um, but I'm sure that they would print onto something. Let's see if there's much on there. This is where the difference between, oh yeah, a little bit. pop them all down see what comes of this I need to get rid of my gel plate under there let's, hang on a sec. let's get rid of this and pop all our leaves down and see what we can get from these it's the same way let's move it around a bit And we might just use a bit of tissue to press those down. Try and get as many prints. It's been a fruitful session. It'll be interesting to count up the number of prints we've been able to make. And really, you don't have to be using the full print. You can just use portions of each one. In collage. Okay. Let's see if we got much off those. It's very subtle, but the other print was subtle, so I think that that's um, given just a little bit more dimension to that print which was otherwise a bit of a nothing print. So that does show the difference between um, using, I think the open paint stayed wet far longer than this. This had a bit of the open paint, but it had the majority of the normal acrylic paint. So a bit of a review. We've got a whole lot of prints in no particular order all from this lesson and it does it does make a nice effect if you've got a garden with <laughs> different plants in it I don't have too many to choose from in my garden sadly but you know um, thankfully I had a bunch of roses given to me and I've <laughs> repurposed the leaves so there you go that is some ideas with botanical printing if you're wondering what to do with all your gel printing, particularly these beautiful botanical prints that you might have just been working on after this video lesson, you might be interested in my masterclass. I've started a masterclass and the first lesson in that masterclass is called Gifting Your Gel Prints. And we, in particular, make a layered botanical gift card. And so I'll teach you in this class how to, uh, what adhesives to use, how to fit your card to an envelope. Also, I'll be also showing you how to line an envelope so it looks so beautiful when they receive it. Uh, we talk about adhesives, we talk about uh, design principles and how to make a beautiful card to gift to those you love. That's why it's called Gifting Your Gel Prints. And... But once you've learned that principle with a layered botanical card, I show you the same thing with just grabbing some uh, stenciled and patterned prints out of my box of leftover gel prints from lots and lots of gel printing sessions. So I've made another card, just a different style, but same, same techniques and you can use that. And then also there's this other little card which is using some 
uh, laser image transfer methods as well. So if you're wondering what to do with all your gel prints, this might be a perfect class to take. It's just one uh, masterclass called Gifting Your Gel Prints. The details will be below this video. And I hope you enjoy um, just repurposing and making these gel prints into gifts that you can share and make beautiful one-off unique cards for those you love.